Facts. I can look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. Fat Man Scoop, Crooklyn Clan, and you are now tuned in to the number one trucking podcast in the world, period. Exclamation point and comma. Trucking hustle. Hustle fam, y'all ready? Congratulations on 100 episodes. And of course, you already know, if you smell something burning, it's only a desire. Let's go. Turn my mic up. For you. Take there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, on the road to the riches Life takes a toll like bridges Good friends become foes and snitches Better watch who knows in your business All good, we ready over there, King Abby? Yes, indeed. All right, we about to get it, man. Hustle fam, hustle fam, we are back with another amazing episode. And boy, do we got a special treat for y'all. I'm sitting here with the... The most important man in trucking right now, oh, man. man. Blush, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, mo- the most important man in the game. What's good, my, man, my brother? brother? man. Oh, man. Listen, bro, I've been uh, I've been trying to get you on this show for a minute. You know, That's a fact. Trying Humbly. to make sure, Humbly. Make, make sure we can connect mm-hmm. and, um, you know, talk about, you know, what you do, man. Because what, what, what you do is one of the most integral parts of this industry that I think gets appreciate overlooked. It. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? So to have somebody with your knowledge, your understanding, your experience on the show is important. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to get you here and and, and and really drop some serious jewels, man. Yeah, I'm here, man. You know what I mean? So so first, introduce yourself, man. Tell the Hustle fam who you are, man, and, and tell them a little bit about yourself, my uh, brother. Uh, in short, my, my name is Kim. Uh, Kim Wages, IG, Kim underscore Kaleidoscope. Uh, for those that know me, you know I'm, I'm a giver first before I take. Um, I've been in the industry for over about seven years collectively, whether it's warehousing combined with trucking. Uh, trucking independently is 12 years uh, in, re- in reality. I'm an active CDL holder. I'm going to let that be known. Because I feel like that's a very important um, a very important part of the industry that's being missed. But, uh, but I strive to just educate people on being able to establish a system and a start that has a standard so you ain't got to like back up off of it and be like, oh, nah, I need to get caught up. Nah, we got to start you off with a standard from the get-go. Uh, so a lot of it is just mainly just want to infuse people with the knowledge that they need to be mechanically inclined, whether they are or not. I don't need you to turn a wrench, but I need you to find something. You know what I'm saying? I want to sharpen your eyes. I want to sharpen your wit. Um, and I know being an owner-operator of the past, I know that at some point in time, you stop lifting that hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And when I see people understand that and get the comp- concept of, I don't need to check that, now nah, it's time for us to double back and, and revitalize this industry with what makes it like move smoothly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Efficient. Yeah. So, so the first time I really came across, you know, what what you were doing, you know, you were connecting with a lot of investors, mm-hmm. right? Like you said, a lot, a lot of people may not know nothing about getting under the hood mm-hmm. or really know a, a, about that part of it. H- how, how did you get into doing stuff like that, connecting with investors and, and helping them get there? Like you said, set them off with that solid foundation. I think it was uh, noticing the void, man. Um, the poison industry was portal. You know, everybody wanted to. Uh, learn how to invest in trucking, but nobody really wanted to learn how to keep it running. Um, so with that said, I was able to, I saw the void. You know, I was actively hiring drivers and actively firing drivers. So I see what an investor is going to eventually run into. And I try to catch them before they get to that point of investing. Because I, I'd rather you know what you're getting into co-heartedly before you blindside, get blindsided by a $40,000 bill that could have been avoided mm. just by your driver pulling over and looking at something. No doubt, no doubt. All right, well, let's 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 get into the backstory a little bit, man. Let's talk about how you got to where you're at today. Um, tell me about coming up, man. Young Young Kim, you know, t- tell me tell me all about it, brother. Man, Young Kim was a ruthless dude, bro. Mm. <laughs> they called me Kim Kim because it was two barrels between me, man. Like I was Queens and I was Brooklyn. Mm. You know, um, being born in Queens and being raised in Brooklyn gives you a different type of cloth. You know, what I mean that that the average cat can't say. You know. We had we're Brooklyn at in the clubs, you know. You like, are you gonna raise your hand now? What you gonna do? <laughs> you know, but you just you still you still support with pride because that's your brotherhood. Facts. Um, so just engulfing myself in at man, I'll be one hundred with you, man. My mom was a single mom, is a single mom at the point where we was like, we this, we all we have. You know, me and my older brother Unique, um, who's not here with us right now, but he's at he's he's Microsoft, man. He's big business. Okay. So we, we unique. That's, that's my motivation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly how you said it. You no, no doubt. Um, so just being able to take from him and infuse my own, create my own little reality. It helped me understand like, all right, 
we got to stand on our own because we don't have a father figure that that is amountable to what we want to envision ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we had a lot of generational curses to break. You know what I mean? A lot of first times. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody want to be the first time millionaire or the or the first time um, navigator of their family or their legacy. Um, that's what we pushed ourselves on, man. So to, to help you get a, a clear understanding, at 9 and 11, me and my brothers two years apart, we took the Shahada in, in Brooklyn, New York. We became Muslim. Okay. At 9 and 11, bro. Yeah. That's just a, that was a self yeah. decision that we made. Uh, we didn't even console our mom at the time because we were so gung-ho on this decision. We did it and we kept it from her in the light of this is the growth that we needed. You know what I'm saying? How'd you know that you needed that growth? Where, where, where'd that come from? I mean, you know what I mean? That come from wanting more. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When you want more. How'd you know you wanted more? Because a lot of times coming up in those type of environments, mm -hmm. you you see what you see. You know what yeah, I mean? Who, who, who exactly. were you able to look to to say that? I saw the alternatives. The alternatives was my, my Forbes family or my Forbes portion of my family in Queens doing whatever they was doing to no result. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the broken legacy of the wages family. Um, just not being able to bring things together as a unit. So we were seeing all these bad examples. Uh, when you see enough bad examples, you, you don't really need more. You just need enough to know that you got to get to that next chapter by any means. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what we adopted, and it's, it's showing true and true indeed. So y'all did that together. So obviously mm -hmm. y'all had a, a, a tight bond yeah. as brothers, and that's you said y'all two years apart? Yep. <laughs> and who's older? Uh, unique. 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 Yeah, I'm the that's a real brother. Brooklyn name too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he, unique. Yeah, he's... he's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's connected to y'all. Y'all know he yeah, out there. That's a fact. Uh -huh. When you say unique, I think I might know like three or yeah, four other uniques. You know that's what I'm fact. saying? All right, so 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 continue, man. Continue um, the story. So yeah, so once we once we indoctrinate indoctrin indoctrinated ourselves in the uh, the Muslim likeness, it gives us a standard of being, um, and then we just added on to it. You know, we started hanging around our elders. We started hanging around folks that was like ten years older than us, fifteen years older than us, just to be able to tap into a different frequency. Cause everybody else is either you know blood, crip, all this other stuff. We ain't want we we we, we see it so much it becomes like ah. Right. It's like it's like the new Jordans come out. Everybody going to the store when you get them, you wear them. Like oh yeah, he got them on. So they don't really have that same effect. Right. So right. we ain't want to wash and repeat. We wanted to actually distinguish ourselves. Um, and by doing so, my brother chose to go to Devry, and that shit that showed me like oh shit, it, part of my French. It yeah. ain't just some street stuff. Yeah. It's actually tapping into a whole nother you know air. Like he's actually channeling his inner self that we haven't had any examples on. So I was like, all right, I'm down for the challenge too. Facts. So let me become something that I have no witness of. Mm. So everything you see seeing right now is one of one. Enough for me to be able to, you know, pay tribute to anybody that I encounter. All right, this is what you need. All right, cool, here you go. Yeah. You know, we want to be able to, you can't be a giver if you ain't absorbing and consuming the things that you need to be able to give at full speed. Right. You know what I mean? You'll be a, a, a tit for tatter. Yeah. You know, I'll give you this, but what you'll give me back. Right. You know what I mean? At some point in time as a man, you got to realize, are you a provider? Or are you, you know, a Win Dixie too, you know, type of dude, like, you know, what you about. <laughs> right. Uh, so wanting to be that provider that I, I became, it helped me understand, like, yo, emphasize the importance of who you are mm. as an individual first, and then you can help out other people as a clan. Um, so my mom moved from Brooklyn, moved us down to Georgia, we did some family stuff in Queens, and it was a beautiful beginning, man. Okay. It allowed me to decompress. Okay. You know what I mean? It allowed me to have the clarity that I needed to learn some more stuff, um, tap into aviation mechanics and all that stuff, where I met my brother, my, my business partner, uh, just working on planes. Like, where you see a kid coming from Brooklyn to Queens working on planes, kid? Like, that's, like, far-fetched. Right. You know what I'm saying? Unless you unless you in a, 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 a corrections program and they're like, yo, go, go out there and sweep by the planes or something right. like that. But right. just being able to tap into different um, different knowledge bases allowed me to challenge myself. Got you. So when you moved from, from Brooklyn to Georgia, how old are you? I was 15 turning 16. 15 turning 16. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're still in high school. I was still in high school, Berkman High School. Okay, East cool. Side Jody. Cool. So you so you graduate high school, mm -hmm. and what happens next? Graduate high school, my dukes hit me with that pressure. Like, yo, <laughs> what you doing, boy? And I was like, yo, I got options. You know, you, you doing the illegal stuff, you doing the legal stuff. What you do, what you gonna do? Was you still Kim Kim at this time? Yeah, I was. <laughs> okay. I was very an accurate legend, bro. That's very disrespectful <laughs> in the A. You already know. All over East Side is Gwinnett, yo. Um, so man, it, she hit me with a, a tough question, and at the time, she was like, what you going to do? You either going to move out with all your sneakers, because that's all I had, boy. Big box of sneakers. <laughs> no, the whole room was number sneakers. Right. But uh, just being able to listen to her enough to be like, I got to make a decision, I started touring my options. I didn't want to do the college thing, because I was, I, was, I was one of those cats that I don't want to do the debt, you know? Um, so I said, I need to do a trade. And at the time, my dad was telling me a lot of stuff about learning as much trades as I can learn so that I would never have to work for somebody and I can emphasize on my capabilities as an individual. Uh, that was what he was telling me while he, while he was in the system. Okay. Uh, so I just I just piggybacked off of it. 
and I was sitting on the couch. How they say it on the other commercial? Oh, you tired of sitting on the couch? You want to be some of yourself? Right, right, right. And the aviation commercial came across the TV, and I was like, yo, this is it. Okay. So I jumped up and went to went to work on planes. All right. So tell me about that experience, man, working on oh, planes. Oh, man, that was a hell of a fight experience. Um, it was educational, and it was, it was, it was, it was a reset. Um, that was where the Kim dropped off and it just became Kim. Because mm. I was like, okay, this is big boy lead. Um, I'm touching things that comes with a high amount of accountability. Um, if, you, if, you, if you touch, if you're the last person that signed off on the plane and that plane goes down, they coming back to you. And they're going to mess up your day for like 60 days straight. F- they go, they're going to, the, the, um, what they call them? The aircraft uh, inspection? Yeah. FAA is going to inspect you to the point where you have nothing left. Wow. And you may not have been the person that messed up that last boat, but knowing you had that much liability attached to just your endeavor, I was like, I can't do that. Right. So I, I literally got to the last portion. I got my ailerons, and I was going to take the test for my power plant, and I, I got hit with so much anxiety and the overwhelmingness, I was just like, I can't do this. I, I was the first thing and the last thing I ever quit. So so you were actually inspecting the planes to be able to do what? To to to, to take off. To take off. Inspecting and working on them. We was putting them together. That's huge pressure. Like, it was, yo, for, I for a 19-year-old, wondered, I always wonder about, wondered about who those guys were because yeah. they're like the most important guys. Got guys in the monkey suits, yo. <laughs> yeah. The guys in the monkey suits. Yeah. 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 And it's a lot of a lot of pressure for a 19-year-old like right. that didn't have a true father figure still. Right. So I'm still itemizing. Somebody in my life, my timeline probably could have helped me come over, come over that anxiety had I been vocal about it. But you're still trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, and 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 it, and it makes sense now when I look at you because that's probably where your attention to detail mm-hmm. and everything I really started. I completely agree. Because man, you talk about having to pay attention. Yeah, this is a plane yeah. carrying pay attention hundreds to pay of people. Your life. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All right. So you said you were gonna take a test, and you said I was. Yeah, I was getting ready. And to that take, was to do what? That was that was to get my completed certification. Okay. You got to take the aileron and the power plant test. I already passed the aileron uh, part. That's like the the, the fuselage and working on the uh, components of the not any, anything but the engine. Okay. Um, I was getting ready to take the power plant in a plane, man. A two seat Cessna came and landed right after we was coming from break, and that plane landed, and then it stopped at the end of the tarmac, and it bottomed out, and the, and the, yo. I remember it like it was yesterday. It bottomed out, and when I saw it, I was like, yo, that ain't supposed to do that. Mm. Next thing I know, you see a whole bunch of police and a whole bunch of fire fire department, and everybody coming to the to the uh, Briscoe Field. That's where it was at in uh, Lawrenceville. And next thing I know, I see the guy in the monkey suit getting hauled off in his, in his handcuffs. And I'm like, dang. And I'm wearing a monkey suit, too, and at, at the time, get ready to go take wow. a test. So I'm like, wait, what's he going to jail for? And then so I got the inquiring and asking the instructors, was like, yo, he was... You know, the last guy that inspected and the last person that certified that plane to take off a flight. So they literally interrupted his whole day and his whole reality just from that one moment. I was like, damn, I was like, am I ready for that? And I, you know, yo, if you've never <laughs> been in the back of a police car, you've never been in a prison yeah. or in a jail or none of that, you ain't trying to see that. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. as much bull crap I might have been in my childhood, I've never seen the back of a police car or a prison. And that right there was like, I I don't know if they, I want to start now. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> I don't now know if I want to start a, now. A reality show. Yeah, man. And it shook me up. So what what is it? So once you pass that test, what's what what can you do now that you couldn't do before passing that test? Oh, you could work with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. You could go down to Hartsfield um, Airport. You could become a, a lead tech there, or you could actually be a facilitator of maintenance. Okay. It's a lot of options. And it changes your pay scale. It changes your pay right? scale, yeah. Tremendously. Tremendously. Is it a big difference. Yep. But the irony of that, at the time I was already doing seventy thousand a year working at Uline. Okay. So I was ready, you know, you in the good. cusp of making Dece- money. You decent. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. Right. But I was just still trying to figure it all out. Got you. Got you. All right. So what happens next, man? You you don't move on to that next level. So mm-hmm. what do you do? I go back to the crib. And I got a big box of marijuana under my bed. <laughs> I'm going to be 100 with you. If I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you transparently. You know what I mean? I, had a, I said I had a bunch of sneakers. Yeah. I ain't say it was in the boxes. <laughs> but <laughs> on the real... <laughs> So, you know, I go back to the crib, my deuce crib, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Realm Lane, shout to shout to everybody on the east side. But um, I, I sit down, I'm looking at the sneaker box, and I ain't gonna hold your hat shaking it. It wasn't even no buds or nothing. I was like, oh, what is this, man? I can't do nothing with this. <laughs> so I literally made my last little bit of $300 off of that. And something happened at that same timeline, man. I actually crashed my car right after I left that school and I decided to devote my life to the bullcrap streets. Mm. I crashed my one vehicle. You know, in Georgia, if you ain't got a car, you ain't got no legs. Right, because it's so mean? big and it's just land. It's, you ain't, ain't no transportation ain't nothing, out here. Nothing. You pedal bike. And this is no Uber or nothing like that this going on. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm on a bike now. On yeah. a pedal bike. Boy, yeah. GT Dino just... I, 
it was a, it was a reset. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said it was a reset. Um, right. It helped me recalibrate too, though, because without you understanding what a sacrifice is, you really don't know what that progress means or what it looks like. Okay. Uh, so I, I had a hell of a reset in that moment. Uh, met my wife at that time, and my whole trajectory just changed. Uh, my pops lost his last appeal. When he lost that, that was what I was working towards, mm. being able to help him out. Okay. Uh, when he lost that, I was like, I got to literally establish my own now. Got you. Know, I got to start my own family. My mom kept telling me, you know, what you going to do. She gave me this uh, question of um, what your legacy look like is what you put what you put forth now. So if you don't put forth no effort right now, then your future is literally going to mirror what it is right now. Facts. So imagine you looking at yourself in 2010 and you ain't put forth no effort to become who you are now. Right. Ramel might have dreads or you might, you know, who knows? Yeah. But um, yeah. so I just applied that, man. And it just shook me up. Got you. Wow. All right. So now you got to become your own man, man. So what steps do you, what steps do you take to, to become that man? Learning. Learning. Taking every chance I get to learn a trade, uh, whether it was learning how to fix a house, learning how to work on cars. That was my passion at the time. Started developing. I had a had a car that was wrecked. So right. I, I ain't right. even want to put the bread to it. So I'm going to learn how to fix it. Learn how to fix I it. I literally put my car back together. Okay. It was crash, crash, bro. Like, <laughs> like firewall, engine to the firewall type stuff. Wow. So I'm in the garage with the pulley. I'm like putting all my educational grit to use and brought mm. the car back to life. Wow. And then wound up selling it for seven hundred dollars because I had a blown head gasket. I didn't predict, but yeah, <laughs> life comes at you fast. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. right, you just right. got you got to make a move. No doubt. So, no doubt. so that right. seven hundred allowed me to bust. You know, right. But moving. but most importantly, you learned. Mm -hmm. You 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 got yeah. the the education out yeah, of it. Yeah, you just got to keep your eyes open enough to realize that this isn't learning time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You All know right. What so what happens after that, man? I, I move on and I, I start taking you line serious. Uh, became the supervisor there, uh, nighttime supervisor. At the time, my car was down, so I'm sharing the car with my dukes. And I, I wound up taking a night shift. By this time, I'm married. And then I wound up jumping up and getting my own car. And then Uline started to hit me with that that friction. I'm the only, I was the only young, bro, I'm like 20 years old now. 19 going into 20, and I'm a manager at a top-tier company. Yeah. At nighttime at that, receiving. Yeah. Um, They didn't like the fact that I didn't have the degrees or the background to make it to that level. I right. was working, working. Right. Um, and when I made it to that level, they gave me such pushback. Ah, I was working through it, bro. I'm, 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 I'm mixing and mingling with the the drivers coming in there for the receiving department. Um, all of the, all of the employees, everybody's loving the morale I'm giving. So I'm just looking like, why the uppers is looking at me like this? So I'm, I'm feeling another sense of friction in corporate America. I guess that's what what, what what I can classify it as because yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Um, and that just let me know, like, damn, they trying to interrupt my timeline. Mm. So anytime I feel like somebody was about to interrupt my timeline, I got to rejuvenate and learn something else to help me get to that next level without their interaction. Right. Uh, so, man, they, they fired me, bro. Really? So so you so you said you were getting a good response from, like, the, the people you were yeah, working with in working the with. warehouse. Yeah. That there was good money. Like, yeah. the people were under you and all yep. that. But, You're talking about 40-year-old cats listening right. to a 20-year-old kid right. telling them how to do this, this, and this. I was structuring things, structuring the unload, all of that. The right. inbound, we, had, we, was, we was bringing in about 50 to 70 trucks a night. That's no easy job, nah, man. bro. You have to do those team From huddles seven, in the beginning, in the beginning yep. of the night and get everybody, be the one. Yep. get everybody all amped up man, and ready listen. to work yep. and people calling out on you and last you minute, you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. Yeah. You know, um, that, that, that was that growth spurt right there that broke like. You don't you don't know if you want to be a leader or not, but we go. You ain't got no choice. Right, right. So like you said, that 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 beginning team meeting, that yeah. team meeting will help me step out of my shell to be able to speak, um, and be able to um, get my verbiage out there and be able to uh, eloquently let people know how you can do more for yourself mm. rather than you doing more for putting that box up there in that shelf. Where do you see yourself at in two years as a owner, as an operator of that forklift? Is that all you want to do? So I'm challenging them internally, like right. So I think that's probably why the uppers didn't like me, but, right. you know. Right. But long story short, I was able to I was able to facilitate the understanding how to talk to my elders without demeaning them and educate them at the same time. Right. Um. And I think that's a, a generational issue that we haven't figured out why the elders haven't handed down stuff to us because they haven't figured out the the, the lanes of communication. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, the, or the proper way to relate it. Ultimately, it's like you were empowering them, and maybe that's why those people look down on you because they didn't maybe want them to they be didn't empowered. Want yeah, I believe that. I truly believe that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I truly because that. It's, it's 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 weird that you would think they'd look at it and be like, man, he's doing a great mm -hmm. job, and, yeah. and they would want to continue that. But man, that's awesome, man. Because I've been in those type of scenarios before, mm -hmm. and. To be a young cat like that with all yeah. those older groggy dudes who don't want to come mm -hmm. to work. Yeah. <laughs> and you give me, it's give me, it's and me they hard looking, time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know, I know it was hectic. Yeah, you know it was. It was at the beginning. 
Um, but I think a part upon um, my mom was in substance abuse for a long time, working, um, helping people re re rehabilitate. And this is segue me to what happened after that. Uh, so they used the most cliche way to get rid of me. Okay. They hit me with a drug test. Now I remember my shoebox, right? I remember the shoebox. I wasn't, I know I wasn't smoking or nothing at the time. Okay. All right. No matter how heavily I might've been around it or whatever, I wasn't enduring it. They hit me with a test and they told me I was positive. Mm. And I'm like, my, my level of integrity, you can't just tell me something and I'm going to accept it. Um, so me not knowing anything about that field of substance abuse or the testing or the protocols on the corporate side, I called my mom. I'm like, yo, I just lost my job. She like, dang. Like, Cause we had this thing in our family, like every other every other year, somebody was losing their job, yo. Right. So it was like, the, you know what I mean? It was like, whose turn is it now? I was like, dang, right. I, I picked the name out the hat. You know, right. so I lost my J-O and then um, she said, how? I was like, they, they piss test me. I was kind of embarrassed to say it. Yeah. You know, I was like, they piss test me and, um, and it came back positive. I was like super like puzzled. I'm like, how the hell? I had to, I was like, wait, say, how long does marijuana stay in your system? She said, such and such, such and such. I said, okay, well, nah, that can't be no positive test. She said, you sure about that? Because she knew about the friction I was getting from the managers and the, right. uh, and the owners and stuff. Right. Uh, she was like, they did, did they hit you with a second test? I said, I'm supposed to get a second test? Mm. I'm like, oh, snap. You know, my, my wheels is turning now. I'm like, oh, okay. I know what they on. They ain't even asked me about the second test and none of that. Right. So what I do... I go to I go straight down to unemployment like our family knew because we was losing like I said we losing jobs you know we, <laughs> we had that unemployment first, finesse. Our first and last name yeah huh? we had that joint figured out <laughs> uh, so I go down there hit my unemployment in and then um, my mom's like let them know um, either they can hit you with a second test or we will pursue with a lawsuit so I actually pressed them with a lawsuit and they didn't they didn't budge for the second test so I'm unemployed for like a three month segment. And I'm waiting for that back pay, which I won. I won the whole settlement. Okay. I got my back pay and I got what I was owed from the time that I got fired to the time I opened up that, that case. Okay. So I got all of that. But in that whole little three-month time, it was another learning phase that kicked in. All right. That learning phase was Forex. Um, we talking like 2008, 2007. Okay. Before Forex became what it is now. Yeah. Now, like, I was, I'm at my first house, bro. First house. Just lost my supervisor job. And it was literally like, damn, I need to figure out another way to multiply. So I, I said, yo, I don't want to go to no physical labor right now. I'm starting to think in my brain a little bit. I don't want to do no physical labor. Uh, me and my boys got the little studio in the back. We rapping and all that stuff. But the Forex was allowing me to channel um, a more technical side of myself with seeing numbers and seeing how things work and move. Right. Uh, doing the currency exchange. I was just doing Japanese yen, uh, the euro, and... Um, and uh, the Canadian dollar. Okay. So I was doing that. Those are my focuses. Okay. That helped me live and feed my family for three months until I got bored with it. So you actually made money. I made a lot of money with it. You know, I always wondered about all these people in Forex, man. I'm like, do nah, they really yeah. make money, nah, man? Someone will be capping. Oh, 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 you see someone all these capping. charts with these yeah. lines, and it's like yeah, I wish you a chart. A uh -huh. Forex millionaire. The chart is supposed to give you access to your bank account. Mm. So no, 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 don't respond to the DM. <laughs> don't respond to the DM. Okay. But, so um, you actually did that and had yeah, some success with I it. I did, but. I didn't feel like it was fast enough. Okay. Um, the amount of time, bro. I'm now. now I, I definitely started smoking blunts around this time. I lost my job, <laughs> right? So I'm sitting there learning and and just till three, four. I was I was working overnight, right? Yeah. So I I adopted that same time frame and I applied it to wanting to learn stuff. Ah. Uh. And I kid you not, bro. The day I got fired from Uline, I actually stopped by the DMV and got the CDL book. The old CDL book. The okay. book was like twelve inches and yeah. whatever. Yeah. With the paper. You, it it turned yellow if you leave it in the uh, window. That <laughs> right, book. Right. So I had that book in the back seat of my, my shorty's car, and I'm just forexing my butt off right now. And then and it, money money was needed. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was just feeling it. I just felt it before it even came around. So she was like, my wife was like, "Yo, what you gonna do?" I said, Shh. "I said I'm gonna get my CD up." We actually were just driving to the store one day. I had my hand on the back of her seat, and this is just me being on a whim's moment's right. notice. You gotta tell us something. Yeah. <laughs> so I had my hand on the seat, and my hand actually touched the book. Okay. I said, what's this back here? I said, oh, snap. <laughs> this is like a whole year later, though. Right. So the book was yellow and decrepit. Right. So she's like, what you think we should do? I said, I'm going to get my CDL. <laughs> right you know on what I, mean? I just threw it out. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, and I had to back it up. Right. I had now, to go get my gotta CDL. you got to do it. You got to be held I'm accountable to that. That ass. Uh, me being unemployed, I was able to tap into the um, the worker program. Yeah. The um, You got to select the services. I was like, man, do I want to? I, I saw Muhammad Ali's story. I was like, he ain't go to the service. How did he get out of it? Right. Before I signed up to agree to select the service, I, I, had, I had to figure out a way out of it. So I don't want to go fight the war. Right. So I said, Muhammad Ali left. He left the country. All right, cool. I'm going to do that if they do choose me. Right. But right. I know they're going to choose me. So I said, I'm going to go get some tattoos. Yeah. So, right. So, long story short, um, 
I, I, I get my CDL. It take me four attempts, man. I failed three times. Four attempts. Yeah. On, on the driving portion, what'd you, what'd you fail? On the driving portion, it was that clutch, bro, uh, uh, coming out. I think it was a setup from the get-go between me and you. Yeah, yeah, Yo. My, Somebody um, always setting this guy up, yeah. man. I don't know, I don't know yo, what's going on here. We, yo, something's starting to get fishy. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but look, we coming out the gate, and the, there's an uh, incline hill. Yeah. And you know if you if you stall a truck and the CDL test is oh, it's a instant rap. fail, bro. It's a wrap. Yo, this is the most humbling experience of my life. Mm. I'm coming out, and I stall on the hill the first time. I pass everything else flying colors. Time for my test, stall. And then when you stall, you got to take the truck out. You got to go around. You got to do a long little course. Yeah. It's just like the same ride you're doing yeah. if you was going to pass. Yeah. So I'm literally doing that knowing I already failed, bro. <laughs> Can you imagine how that like feels? The walk, like, of, the yeah, walk of shame. It's the walk of shame, yo. It's the driver shame. <laughs> the driver like shame. to be able to go around, it's like a two mile circuit. Yeah, so yeah. You feel yeah. Like every inch of that mile, like man. Right, right, it, right. It really broke my spirit. Um, and then my mom, she was letting me know. She's like, "Yo, go, go try again," because I was at that point. I was two times in on feeling at that daggone incline. Right. So I had um, I called my uncle Gerard, who was driving at the time. I was like, "Yo, give me some advice on the on the clutch." He's like, "Find your friction point." I said, "Ah, I said you son of a son of a." Mm. That right there did it. So I get to the test. Before I even get to the hill, I find my friction point on the flat surface. The friction point is you let the clutch up a little bit, about halfway or 25%, and then you feel that tug. Once you feel that little tug, that lets you know you got enough momentum to come up off of that clutch and follow up with the gas. Mm. So me finding that, and what? I pull out that test. You was whipping Now it. she tried to switch it up on me. She's like, what was that last sign right there? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, yo, I didn't even know that part existed. Yo. Keep your eyes moving. Man, I, I, hit it, I hit it with somebody. I was like, yo, I said, blind kid playing. I said, blind kid at play. I ain't know if that sign said that. Right. I'll be 100 with you. Right. I just I just know that that's one of those signs. Right, right, I'm like, right. blind kid at play. She was like, she just she's, she's like, she's okay. accepted it. She's right. like, I can't argue that one. She probably didn't even see she what probably the sign was. Yeah. So that helped me, you know, that helped me get, get through my test real easy. Um, Just 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 applying and, and, and asking for advice from my elders. That's so funny, man. Thinking about those uh, those driving tests, um, man. You know, I, I I remember I got my CDL in two thousand and four. Is it still and, active? Yes. Oh man. Yes, it's, it's very active. Yes. I remember, I'm man. Call I you, bro. If I need the, a trip recovery, the, the, the pre trip. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Uh, check the oil. Uh -huh. Make sure all of that. Yeah. And then the back end and all that. That uh -huh. was that was That's the my good old part. day. Alley alley docking. Dock yeah. Your back end. That was some good stuff, yeah, man. man. Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do that. That's real. You know? That's real. And I wish they would. I wish more people would take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's enlightening, you know. Like I said, my mother was a substance abuse abuse counselor for so long that she wanted to see the world. The fastest and easiest way for her to accommodate that was get a CDL. Yeah. So my mom was just rocking a CDL, like in out here, being Yo. able to switch up her her day to day activity and just seeing things and live a little bit. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, for sure. All right. So you get the CDL. What happens next? Oh man, it's turning burn time. I'm thinking, I'm thinking on an operator off the rip. I wasn't thinking company driver. Um, I started doing the comparables. Me, me making the money with Forex allowed me to see money in a different light. I mean, me being a father now to a, my only son at the time allowed me to see things at an even greater light. I gotta be accountable and I gotta make enough money and multiply enough money to be able to, you know, sustain this family. Yeah. Um, so I go right to KLM. And the first conversation they had with me is like company driver, owner, operator. And I'm like, yo, I said, I don't know what company driver is, bro. Just show me on operator. <laughs> right. Um, so I got into a truck with my man, uh, Ernest Moore. Salute, salute, shout to Ernest. Um, uh, Earl Moore, sorry about that. And Earl was able to teach me the maneuvering of the truck that I did, that I, that I probably lapsed in. Right. And I was able to teach him the systems of being able to record his um, maintenance intervals, um, how to actually do fuel. Back then, they didn't even have a fuel calculator. It wasn't calculating fuel. They were just pumping. Right. And the one phrase they would say, watch how much you pump because it's going to be coming out of our paycheck. Right. And I'm like, yo, that don't sound right, bro. I need to know this. Yeah. So I started coming up and divvying up formulas for all of this stuff. Um, the fuel formula now that everybody's using was a part of my knowledge base that I developed. This is like 2006, um, seven, eight, around that time. Mm. So your, the fuel formula is this. Um, you go 700 miles. You take your 700 miles and you, you actually divide that into how much miles per gallon your truck is getting. And that's going to tell you how many gallons you need. But I always add 10 gallons on top of that because no matter where I get to, I'm never going to be running out of fuel. But the kick to the 10 gallons is you got five trips a week, right? You added 10 gallons per trip. That's 50 extra gallons at the end of the week, right? Now you got free, uh, close to a free trip of fuel. So even if your last load for the week wasn't paying substantially enough, you already negated a portion of that revenue towards the fuel to go to your pocket. Mm. You know what I mean? So we, I was developing ways to keep money right. and, and, and track money 
And it was just a beautiful thing. Did that come from your aviation uh, experience? Is that I think I think it did. Yeah, I think it did. Um, breaking down numbers and, and and formulating systems. Got you, got you. All right, that's dope. So you said you you didn't even think about being a uh, company driver. You went straight no. to owner operator. So you said you were, you were team driving with. I had to. You know, okay. When you first come out, you gotta you gotta have a trainer. Um, and they asked me specifically what kind of trainer I want. I said I want an elder. I want to. I want somebody who's actually been out here more than five years. Okay. Because you know now they'll put you on a training with the same cat that just came out of school with you. Right. Like nah, bro. How you learning? <laughs> what y'all learning? Each the blind, the blind leading the you know blind. What I'm saying? Each other's mistakes. Uh, so that was a beautiful uh, beginning, man. Earl tried to ask me to be permanent on his truck because it was such a good. He seen a uh, he seen a fifteen to twenty percent revenue growth just from the three months I was on his truck. Right. And that's not the team, you know, how they make money off the team drivers and stuff. That that's not even included in any of that. Yeah. It's just the sensibility of him knowing his spread now. Got um, you. So, so that, that fuel consumption. That fuel, yep. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Fuel. For sure. And then trip management. Um, okay, talk about that. Teaching him how to route himself to the right lanes. Um Atlanta uh, KLM had two hubs at the time. Uh, one was in Atlanta and one was in Portage. Um Earl was based out of Dallas. So he would have to leave Dallas and try to get to one of those two hubs to make uh, generate a positive revenue. So I said, why don't we get a load going to the Portage uh, realm? Because Atlanta's oversaturated already. It's everybody that comes in KLM won't go straight to Atlanta. Right. I said, let's go to the, to the, to the portal that nobody's thinking about going to because we'll have more options for freight. And then on top of that, the Midwest is always booming, no matter what time of year, Ohio and Indiana. If you want to make bread, if you got a truck moving right now, your truck should touch Ohio no, a minimum of three times a week mm. if you want to bust, bust out the gross. Um, so at the time, me telling him to let's go to Portage, he, was, he ain't understand it until we got up there. And then we was just killing freight, man. Wow. Killing freight. We're talking about $4,000 weeks. Like, and this is me after I get in my own trucks, four to $5,000 weeks. If net. Yeah, if, if, if you want to catch fish, man, go where there's no fishermen. You, exactly. you know what I'm saying? There you go. This is it. it's wide open. It was wide open. That's dope. That's dope. So you said he he, he showed how much of a, a growth? 15% minimum. 15%. Yep. So he didn't want to let you go. He didn't want to let me go. He was like, bro, he said, yo, can I keep you riding the truck? I'm like, nah. So I got my, I got my own I got my own chapter to uh, carve out. Okay, respectfully, so you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's get into that. What? How, how do you separate from him, and how do you get into your own thing? I, I go back and I take the owner operator um, class they had. Um, they just wanted they want you to come in and they want you to make sure you understand the numbers and stuff. I was just breaking down. Yeah. The irony of that, they asked me to understand it, but they ain't teaching none of that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like I didn't understand that. How you asking me? Are you, are you gauging my understanding on something that you say you have, but the right. previous drivers don't have it? Right. So I went in there and then I picked out my truck. Um, and this is this is where it got really interesting. There's like um, a lease to own? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, I picked out a 2009 truck in 2008. Um, and while I was going through that class, I met my one of my good friends, Taurus. And he actually became my first driver when I when I, when I I kicked off, kicked off. Okay. But me and him, we both was like, he was like, yo, what do, how do I pick a truck? I said, I said, all right, this is what you got to do. Now all of a sudden, everybody in the class is coming around. I'm like, I got to go down there. I got to get the maintenance report first of all. Right. And that this is this is the the airplane stuff kicking in. Like get the maintenance report, find everything they done on that truck. I said the bigger the maintenance report, the better that truck go be. Right. Like I don't know why. I was like <laughs> it's just I was just like a stick love, just whatever. Yeah. Um. So we all down there. It was, it was like twelve of us in the class. Okay. That 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 one week, the um the facilitator said we've never seen nobody ask for the maintenance report. Right. <laughs> She, she was like, huh? Right. She had to even figure out how to get it. Yeah. So I was like, we're going to be patient. We're just going to go to lunch. So we go to Golden Corral around the corner, come back, and everybody had their maintenance reports for the trucks they picked out. Right. Some trucks got left, and then some trucks got taken. Uh, my truck was was the perfect truck at that moment. Um, so that just, man, I was turning and burning. Mm. I left uh, Mississippi, my orientation location, and I went straight to Atlanta for my little week off. And then after that, they say, you want to be in Atlanta or Portage? Yeah. Said nah, send me the portage. Okay. So every every two weeks, that's where I would be at. Now I stop. Now I stop running, man. Wow, wow, that's crazy. So how long did you do that? Uh, I did that for uh, enough to almost pay off the truck. Okay. So Ooh, that in, was like two and a half, three years. So two and a half, three years. Two and a half, three years. I dedicated to KLM, learning the systems and learning uh, the owner operator round, mm -hmm. learning maintenance intervals, learning learning. I met so many mechanics on the road. Um, I'm the guy. If you come to work on my truck, I'm gonna test your knowledge base for one. Even if I don't know nothing, I'm gonna still test your knowledge base because I don't want you messing up my truck. Right. You know, this truck's costing seven hundred dollars a week. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I put right, a, right. I put an extra K on that. Right. You know. Um, right. <laughs> so that just in that alone allowed me to get more information and more knowledge. Yeah. Because I didn't I didn't tap into the diesel side until I got into the CDLs. Mm. So with every and this is just a tip for anybody out there. Any, with every person that comes to touch your equipment, learn from them. You know what I mean? Whether whether it's hey, how often should I change this filter? 
or whether it's, hey, well, how often should I drain these tanks? All of that is applied knowledge. And if you got a, a, a experienced mechanic about to touch your equipment, that's a blessing to you. So I was just tapping in nonstop with them. Yeah, so, so how, how important would you say that that three-year uh, experience was to your business moving forward? Like, would you tell somebody to go that same exact route if they were trying to get into this industry? I would. Yeah? I would. You got to crawl before you walk, you know? Um, especially with the way people are shopping trucks right now. You buy a truck and it'll mess up your whole trajectory. Mm. You be the wrong truck. Ain't nobody got maintenance reports no more. Right. You know, they're not pushing that um, learn your equipment no more. They're just putting a number on it. If the number's good for you and you got the credit and you got the money, the down payment, it's yours. But when you get that, you got a lemon. They all know the, you know, the miles, parameters, it's so much. Right. Um, I'd rather, if you, got, if you got the chance to learn from somebody that's older than you or somebody that's been in this industry, take advantage of it. Find a mentor. Find somebody who's actually actually doing what it is you want to do. Yeah. You know, um, and this is it's one of those things, man. You got you to gotta have proof in the pudding. Got you, 100%. All right, so three years, you you rock out with KLM. Mm -hmm. what, K what? KLM shafted me, man. <laughs> I didn't want to say it because I knew he was like, yo, everybody get my mans, man. But that's the growth. God, man. Yo, I take growth from I from already else. knew this, somebody did something to you. Yeah, I yo, told you I'm that. out here for vengeance, man. Like, <laughs> you, you know? Um, you going to say I shafted you by nah, this nah, interview. Nah, like, yo, nah, nah, Chuck nah, nah. Chuck it, I'll shoot in the dirt. Hey, let me drop the interview rap. <laughs> Guys, so nah, what um, happens? They shaft you yeah, yo, uh, with with lease owner operators. The part that they don't tell you about is you have a confinement of where you can get that truck worked on. So you think you can get that truck worked on at Tom, Dick, and Hanks? But nah, bro. They had a limitation of who I could take it to and, and et cetera. So I'm down to like three months left on this, this lease. I'm about to pay this truck off. My first truck. I'm like, oh, snap. Right. I was working that hard. Two and a half years. Hard body. I get down to two, uh, two months. I have a clutch issue, man. This is how I started to learn all about the clutches, too. Okay. So my clutch is going out in... Um, in uh, Indianapolis. Okay. And this is around Christmas time. I got to try to get home. Almost didn't make it home. They said, every shop is closed in the area. They said, we, got, we need you to take your truck to this particular shop and this particular shop only. So they actually restricted me mm. of where I could take it to. To me, that's a realm of liability. Yeah. Right? The moment it happened, I was like, okay, y'all taking ownership of anything that they, that they do or don't do right. Facts. So I, I, I'm in a hotel for like a day and a half. They working on my clutch. I needed a new flywheel. Um, I get my clutch, my joints still hitting the floor. I ain't get no pressure, no nothing. Go back in there. So I'm in there another day. Now it's like, um, I'm getting my truck out. It's Christmas Eve. So I'm, I'm high telling it to Atlanta. And I ain't even realizing my clutch still ain't working. Right. I'm floating by this time. Right. So I ain't even, I don't care about you clutch. As long as I can yep. get in that first gear, you good money. I'm, I'm, I'm scooting. Yeah. And I had a load on me too. So, and it's a reefer load. Okay. So you already know. Reefer load, I was already in that hotel for two and a half days. Oh, yeah. First, I'm, bro, I, I literally had a gas can putting gas in the daggone reefer tank. Yeah, the cold while chain. While the truck was at the, you know, I'm to keep it moving. Keep, while yep, the truck keep was the at the cold thing. chain going. Yep. Yeah. And this is in the wintertime, bro. I'm walking doing this. Wow. So we talking about sacrificial moves. Um, so I get down to, <laughs> shit, real. <laughs> so I get down to um, Atlanta. Clutch goes out at the yard. I couldn't even go in reverse at the KLM yard. I'm dropping the trailer for the week. And I let him look at the truck, man. I go in there, I raise hell, man. I raise hell. I say, yo, I say, I just, I had to pay for that, though. That's the plot twist. They'll tell you where to take your truck, but they, you, it's coming out of your profit. It's coming right. out of your money. Right. And you can't reprimand them because they sent you there. Nah, nah, not this time. Yeah. So I told them, I was like, yo, y'all sent me, y'all got me up here at this bad shop. They messed up my stuff. Y'all going to hold them accountable? Oh, no, you should follow up with them and see if they could. I did that already. I was already on the phone with them before I called you. Right. I just, I, I was telling them, man, yeah, I'm pissing my big brother after you. And then my big brother, like, yo, I don't, this your fight. Yeah. So I was like, I yo, do me like that. Damn. So my black butt takes my truck over the freight liner. And I say, yo, y'all buy trucks? I remember I said, like, two months away from it being paid off. Mm -hmm. They was like, yeah, yeah, we buy trucks. I said, well, I got a truck with a bad clutch, which I probably shouldn't have said. Let them find that out. <laughs> right. But I was like, I got a truck with a bad clutch. He's like, well, take a look at it. How much you owe on it? I just did the math real quick. I'm like, uh, $6,700. Oh, he said, okay, cool, cool. Next thing I know, they they write, trying to write me a check for that truck. Right. But I had to get permission from KLM to sell it to them. Okay. So I get permission. KLM says no. They said, we're going to put a hold on that truck because you, you got repairs that's needed and you got a uh, balance due. I said, so if they actually write that check, can I have them write it in your name and then you hit me with the, the et cetera? With the ex ex excess. Right? Yeah. Right? They said, nah, come and turn your truck in at the terminal and then we're going to work out your account the right way. I don't know what the right way was. Right. My crazy butt, I turned it into the terminal thinking I'm doing the right stuff. Bro, they shafted me, bro. I got my last check. It was like 4700 because I was still running my runs. And then they hit me with um, 
like maybe thirty five to four thousand dollars, and then they told me to upgrade into a new truck. Wow. So the owner operator plea that everybody's talking about, go out here and get a truck with these companies, that's what they do. You get to the point where your truck's about to be paid off, they'll do everything in their power to make sure that you upgrade to another truck to keep that wheel moving. Because mm. at the end of the day, they leasing trucks. They don't own none of these trucks. Right. So the same thing that they're doing, we're, we're figuring out how to do now with leasing trucks and getting being able to have access to a big fleet immediately. And they, they just, they, they they business model at the time wasn't successful, um, especially when, when it came to um, liability. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like an iPhone, man. Yeah. As, soon, as, soon, as soon as uh yeah. as soon as the next one come out. As soon as next one come yeah. out, your joint just stop work working all of a sudden, that's right? It. Yep. Kid yep. open no apps or nothing. nothing yep. That that's crazy. No FaceTime, bro. no nothing. <laughs> that's they crazy. Yeah, they that's know what crazy. they was doing. Yeah, real talk. But it, it it just made me more tenacious. Yeah. Like it ain't stopped nothing, bro. Um wow. I got that little bit of check they gave me. I added it up about nine thousand. And I got online and I started searching for trucks. I said, yo, this is just telling me that I need to start doing my own thing. Mm. I uh, mm. called my older brother. I was like, yo, I, I got Unique. fired. Yeah, I hit him with the, I got fired. So, you know, every time we had an I got fired conversation in our family, it, <laughs> it comes with a lot of weight. He's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> but I didn't really get fired. I just walked off the job. Right. Um, I was like, yo, I said, KLM don't believe in me, man. That's exactly how I shot my conversation. My brother's real compassionate. Right. So if I tell him the right things, he's going to tell me the right things back. Ah. Uh, just be able to read the situation and understand it. I said, yeah, they, they, I said, they let me go. And I told him the whole situation with the truck. He's like, so... Now, this, this whole time, he's super inquisitive on how am I structuring the business, all of this stuff. Everything that I'm learning, the fundamentals, he's questioning them. To one, second check my own information and make sure that I'm sure what I'm, what I'm thinking, and then to actually validate what he's thinking about being a part of it. Uh, so I was like, yo, I said, what you think I should do? He said, man, what you want to do? I said, I want to go get my own truck. He said, how much you got? I said, I got cash. I probably got like 19, something like that. But he said, no, nah. he said, you don't want to use it all. So he actually sent me $10,000. He said, all right, he said, just put this towards your truck. So I go to Jefferson um, Freightliner, and at the time, everybody hated automatics. Everybody. You couldn't put nobody in the automatic back then. Right. You couldn't pay them to drive automatic. Right. And they was getting paid. I'm a real driver. I'm a real driver. I'm a real truck right? driver. I don't do no automatic. Man, <laughs> listen, man, that was a story of the, that was a story in the dealership. They had three automatics sitting there, nobody touched for like four weeks. So here I go, driving up there, D to D to D, and I'm going to look at the automatics. Right. I'm like, this is my price point. Right. I'm like, I ain't go, man, I ain't, you know, I'm going to learn them if yeah. I got to learn them. Yeah. So I, I put, put my deposit down on one truck. Um, by the time I get home, to tell me that truck was sold. I'm like, damn, that was the one I wanted. Right. Um, so then I wind up going back, found another one, automatic. It's a 2006 Freightliner. Um, at the time, it had uh, 500 and like 5,000 miles. And I got it for 22K. Okay. Cash. Okay. I was like, that's the one. Yeah. You know, he was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did my little fake pre-trips and all that stuff back then. So I check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's you know, good. Give me a, a three-day warranty, something like that. Um, <laughs> three-day yeah, warranty. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, did the, I did the background on um, where the truck was coming from. Okay. What, how the truck was being operated and uh, the the um, the ratio of the tires, everything. I did the full specs on that truck mm. to make sure that the way I'm going to use it is going to make sense. Gotcha. And that's the plot twist because if you buy trucks out here right now, you're not specking them or even finding out what capacity it was being used in, you might get an underrated truck and you're trying to haul 40,000 40, pounds up Mount Eagle. Your truck looking like it. You're like, yo, I ain't built for this. Right. So I started learning all of that even while shopping. That you, you got to have the right how'd type you, of How'd you get that information? That was from picking out that truck at KLM. Mm, okay. Picking out that truck. I wanted the maintenance report. The maintenance report showed me Everything. that there's way more than just a steering wheel. <laughs> right. Now, facts. Right, right, right. Wow. That's dope. That's dope. All right, continue, man. Yeah. So, Let's um, get into it. So me, me grabbing that truck, now it was time for me to start my business. Um, that, that, that started k k Transport. Um, it started out as, I started out with the authority and I was, I was working the authority. And at the time, the brokers was like savages on a whole nother level. No matter what load you called on, you felt like you was getting, I got to help you. I'm right. trying to call to help you on a load. Right. But the disrespect and the tone of, of conversations, it just didn't feel right. Right. So I was like, nah, I can't do this on a day to day, bro. Cats out there booking loads on their laptops and just, I couldn't do it. I was like, at the time. Yeah. So I said, I got to find another way. And I started thinking about um, 3PL, 3PL okay. contracts. Okay. Um, Land Stars, the, the, um, the JB Hunts, all these different, yep. you know, what have you. Yep. So I just weeded them out. And just so happened that Landstar was the best uh, candidate. And since then, man, we had a long standing relationship. And we still with Landstar, some of our trucks. Got you, got you, got you. That's dope. So did you ever have a trailer? Nah, nah. When well, last time you ain't need no trailer. Well, I'm saying before that, you, nah. you, you never had to get uh, a trailer. Yeah, I was doing nah. So you're doing power only. I was doing power only, but they provide the trailer. Yeah. And then for a particular percentage and all of that. 
And even with the particular percentages, I had to figure out the numbers so that I could still match my previous numbers and how much effort I had to put forth to bring those numbers forth with them taking the cut. Mm. So long, fast forward real quick, with them taking the cut, I'm still doing better than these trucks is doing I had with their own authority, mm. truck for truck. So you making your numbers with your authority, they cutting into mine, and I'm still killing your numbers. Right. Because I circumnavigated and figured out how to run that system. I pressure tested that system. Gotcha. Same way I pressure tested uh, KLM system to be able to generate $4,500 a week net. Um, so that's what everything, you got to learn the system, you got to learn the inner workings of it. So if you tell me, yo, I got, a, I got some trucks over here, truck and hustle doing good. Yo, come over here, rock with me. I don't worry. All right, I'm going to take one of my trucks. We're going to come over there and we're going to pressure test the hell out of that system. We ain't going to abruptly leave once we find out that your system ain't conducive to the type of money we're looking for. But we're going to educate you on it and let you know that, yo, you said it was this and this. This is why it ain't this, this, and this. Right. And then we go politely escort ourselves back over to what we got going on. Right. So I only did that for about maybe three years after starting with Landstar with like mom and pop authorities, cats is like soliciting, like, yo, come work with me. Like just enough to realize that what I got going on, nobody's messing with. And that helped me gain my confidence in the systems that I had. So now it's just, you know, the confidence what, what, is there. What, what, what does Landstar have that sets them above, you know, all the other, you know, people that you could possibly partner with? What, what, what systems do they have in place that, you know, for anybody listening who maybe yeah. should not follow in the same route? I believe it's the, it's the relationships. Um, it's the direct freight. Um, it's the, the, the lack of mystery. You know, um, then on top of that, you know the price of tires right now, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I give tires 50%, yo. Right. You, know, you got a lot of trucks, that adds up. Right. Uh, fuel discounts. Um, if I need a business loan, I can get a business loan through Landstar. On the behalf of what my 1099 looked like. Mm -hmm. So if my 1099 generated a quarter of a million last year, I get a business loan for a fraction of that capability. Right. They just looking at, oh, where are he putting the numbers? Yeah, yeah. Right. And that'll help me buy more equipment. Gotcha. So it's just learning what each avenue can contribute and add to you enough to play part in each part. Got you. Dope. So how do you grow with them? How do, how do you scale with Landstar? Tell me about the business as you um, How do you continue. scale with Landstar? How did you personally? Oh, how did I scale? Yeah. I just met good drivers, bro. Okay. And, um, my, like I said, my first driver I was talking about, he actually started with me at KLM. Okay. So me learning how to communicate. Now you got to learn how to communicate to a driver. Not the fact that you was just a driver, but how do you talk to a driver? Um, how does a driver feed off your energy? Is that driver going to wake up and want to put in work for your company mm. off the behalf that you don't know how to answer the phone? Facts. You know, he all had a breakdown. I ain't going to hold you. Anybody that owns a truck right now, if that phone number rings and it has a driver name on it, you don't want to pick it up. Because you're like, yo, it might be a breakdown, it's, it's man. It's always bad it's news. good chance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but Bobby 100, I, I get, I look forward to the call now. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I got drivers I'm about to educate, you know, on something, whatever they're happening. And it's not just my drivers, it's other people's drivers. Every driver I've onboarded in the last three years, sometimes at point, some point in time, call my phone. Yeah. Like, yo, Kim, I got this situation going on. How can I, whatever, whatever. But yeah, how do you scale? You got to you gotta indoctrinate a way of communication that's not selfish. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you can talk to the people like they're people, then you got a whole nother, you got a whole nother plateau to reach too. Yeah, I, I think that's so important. When I asked the question, how do you scale? You started with the drivers. You have to. Because a lot of people look at scaling in terms of like getting more trucks, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Or getting more customers. Mm -hmm. But it's like the that's drivers the underlying are part. the bloodline of your Yo, business. So that's important. That's the true definition of you an asset. You get more drivers. That's how mm -hmm. you scale. That's the real um, asset. For sure. Um, let, let's dig a little bit deeper into drivers because mm -hmm. that's the number one problem in this yeah. industry, right? And you deal with a lot of them. That's a fact. Right? You, not only for yourself, but for other people as mm -hmm. well. What's going on right now in the industry? Why is it so difficult to find drivers? The drivers who are out there, what, what, what's the tone that you see with the different drivers you, that you're onboarding, that you're talking to, these conversations that you're having? What, what's, what, what, what's, what's happening right now? I'm seeing opportunists on both ends of the field. Um, I'm seeing opportunists and investors. Um, they don't understand the drivers that they're trying to solicit for their company. Whether you got certain endorsements on your license, your endorsements might cater to my operations or they might not. Um, and they're going to throw anybody they can get in that truck because at the end of the day, they got a bottom line. They're not thinking about the importance of that driver being the plateau and then building on that. They're not, if I, if I, if I meet you for the first time, like I want to get in a truck in, and you like, I already got the truck, this, this, and this. I'm up to first thing. What do I do now? Find you a lead driver. Don't just mm. find a driver. Find a lead driver. Mm. A lead driver will help you delegate certain certain you know attributions, and then also help you develop certain weaknesses. I you love that. Saying? 
Um, yeah. And then the, on, the, on the aspect of the drivers, it's opportunistic. The, the price is freighted going up. Drivers know if I come over here and work for uh, TH, they're going to pay me $1.75 a mile. But if I go over there and work for k and I can call them and say, yo, TH, pay me $1.75. What can you offer me? Two ten. You should say It's opportunistic mentality right now. Um, and without them understanding that we all could work together and we come up with sensible standards, sensible numbers, and sensible um, itemization of who, who, each other's role. Play your role well, bro. And then I can reward that role and allow me to play my role. But when you come to my company and you want to tell me how to run my company, and you ain't even had, even if you had a company, this ain't, this ain't your company. Right. You know what I mean? If you want to be a privy to what I got going on, then be a privy to your position right. first. And then add value to me, then I, I, was, I will, and, you know, give that back. Yeah. Um, so we're at a point right now where it's opportunistic on both ends of the spectrum. Wow. What, what, do, you, what do you advise advise investors to do? Um, you know, what, what do they need to bring to the table to attract good drivers, man? This dang on book right here. I've been. I seen that Bible in your hand. Yeah, you said it right. The Bible. You know what I'm saying. I seen it, that it, Bible in your hand. What's that, man? What you got over there? This is the there? FMCA, yeah, FMCSA regulations handbook. Um, this is the industry's Bible. So I tell anybody this: if you're thinking about buying a portal, if you're thinking about buying a class, whatever it is you're thinking about buying, if you ain't buy this first, you starting off wrong. Just buy this. And the same time your legs is going numb sitting on that toilet, you should be reading this. <laughs> like, for real. You should, be, you should be diving in on this because this has everything you're going to ask me at some point. Mm. Every question you ask me. And I don't mind, I don't mind questions. Questions is good. It's, right. it's, 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 you know, it's conducive to learning. But you have to look into this book because it'll give you the ins and outs of the industry. You know, whether you want to, whether you want to re-enlist a substance abuse person that just came off of substance abuse uh, restrictions, it's in here. Whether you want to figure out if you could have a felon in your truck, at what capacity, it's in here. You know what I'm saying? Whether, you're, whether your driver's just been woken up by a DOT inspector telling him he's going to get a level three, and your driver's like, yo, is that right? It's in here. Which it ain't right. If, the, if he's trying to wake you up, tell him, nah, yo, close your curtains. I'm on my 10 hour break. <laughs> but, and that's in here. Right. You know what I mean? So with all these different, different um, tidbits that's in here, you shouldn't have to go and purchase a, a, a four different courses. Or you shouldn't have to keep pouring money into something that you don't understand when the understanding is right here. You know what I mean? So it's they say they say if you want if you want to hire something from somebody, put, put it in, in a book. book. Put it's in a book. thick ass book, bro. Why, why why do we overlook that thing, man? Now now I'm gonna tell you mm-hmm. the, the big boys. That's the first it's thing the you first get. thing they get. They you get all three you, of them. You, you can't even get hired you without know. getting those. And you got books. an issue that you got them. <laughs> right. You right. got a literally an issue that you got them. Yeah. That says some importance. Yeah. That that that's a fact. But mm-hmm. I think. Maybe because it's like we get into this industry for, I guess, the right reasons. Mm-hmm. We want to make money, obviously. Everybody works and starts a business to make money, yeah. but we're not laying the right foundations. Nah. And I think that's where you come in is you provide that foundation for mm-hmm. businesses that they often overlook because maybe they don't know what's there. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they don't know what exists. And the examples that they got that it wasn't there is, is so privy. I'm going to share a rate con with you on my, on my, on my social feed. Right. Showing you four thousand dollar load going one hundred miles. That ain't an everyday thing. Trucking is every every day is individual in trucking. Right. I can't associate yesterday to today. Only thing I can associate is the fact that this load is a two day load. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No Other doubt. Other than that, every day is going to be its own individual day. Yeah. So for me to say I'm looking at your page or something and I'm getting motivated by seeing rate cons this and this before I even ask you what that rate con consists of, what you had to go through to get it. I'm already motivated by the fact you got a four thousand dollar load going 100 miles. Right. So I am, I'm gonna skip over the bull crap. <laughs> right. I'm gonna skip over the you know the necessities. Right. And I'm gonna get straight to I want to get straight to that rate con. How do I get there? Yeah. So that, that's part of the reason. You know, people skipping over stuff, man. Wow. Wow. And it, and it's getting easier for them to do it because there's people catering to them being capable. They think that passive and trucking go together. Nah, bro. You got to learn every aspect of what you're about to delegate, or else you're about to be like Miana and have your bank account hit. You got to learn what you go delegate. Facts. You know, somebody will happily open up a business and take care of your compliance, mm-hmm. take care of all that. And tax you. And, and tax you and for tax it. you. You know what I'm but saying? But when things hit the fan, who's it going to be on? You in front of that judge, bro. Yeah. Your, your representative to getting drivers in that truck and that dude that showed you how to start your company, he ain't in that, they ain't in that, they ain't in that, um, that judge chair. You are. Yeah. Because your DOT is directly tied to your lineage. Wow. What, 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 what else? I mean, that is absolutely the most important mm-hmm. thing. What else do investors or carriers, the small carriers, mm-hmm. like the, the ones that you probably will deal with more, right? Two, three trucks. What do they need to do to attract drivers? Like in terms of, do they need to be buying newer trucks? Do they need to be putting APU? Like what, what are mm-hmm. the different things they should be doing to attract good drivers? 
uh, you can put everything in the truck you want. They ain't go dictate if that driver's a good driver or not. Mm. You know, uh, really start with having a conversation of relativity. You when you when if I if I get a job on the phone, first thing I'm asking is how you doing. I want to know how you doing first, right? To see how's your, your mental state. You know what I mean? If you tell me, oh, man, yeah, she been giving me hell this whole week. <laughs> We've been doing this, this. I'm like, dude, I just asked you how you was doing, man. <laughs> then that lets me know that every time I call this driver on the road, what he gonna do? Right, he gonna complain about what's you going what I'm on saying? at home. You gotta and... be able to read people. Right, that and trickles before down before you tell them what you need from them. You gotta be able to. You know what I mean? Give them some recourse to being themselves for a minute so you can know if you're going to take it to that next level. Right. People want to take it to the next level. Hey, I got a truck. You ready to drive tomorrow? Nah, bro. Find out about that person. Find a point of relativity so you can itemize if you can have a conversation with this person past whatever they got going on individually enough to do business. Because at the end of the day, individual matters more than anybody, no matter what level of business. Look at Jeff Bezos. No matter what level of business you in, the individual stuff always come out. Right, you know, so I feel like um, if you want to if you want to solicit a driver, do something unique, do something outside of the box. Um, come up with a um, come up with an offer plan that allows you to solicit a driver at a faster rate. Hop in the driver's DMs, show a positive point of your business, show things that you're giving back to the driver rather than the driver giving to you. You know, so it's you got to start with a point of appreciation, which also starts with that point of relativity. You know, hey, how you doing? Uh, hey, my name is John. Hey, John, my name is Kim. Man, I gotta. I got a question for you, man. It's a very, very important question. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, Mr. Kim, go ahead. How are you doing? Right. Imagine that first interaction. Somebody asks you that, you ain't never been asked that in a long time? Yeah. That says a lot. Yeah. That says you're human. Right. I could work for you now. That's a fact. I could work with you now. You know what I mean? So it's just about perspective. Yeah, because usually the conv conversation goes something like, um, how much? How, how much y'all pay? Mm -hmm. How much y'all paying? Mm -hmm. that, that you you cut right to yeah, that. Yeah. And if there's friction there at that mm -hmm. point. You already, you going, already know. It's already left. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you like you know. said, start with the basics. Yep. Like, how are you? Yeah. How's your mental state? You gotta state? feed the energy. I gotta feel your energy to make sure you fit in my mold. I like if that. you. If you like abrasive and you, I don't mind the abrasive type. That's cool. But I need to know that that shipper ain't gonna kick you off the property because you done went up in there. <laughs> you got disrespectful. Yeah. You know what I mean? We might be trying to get a dedicated account with that shipper. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. I tell a lot of the drivers we on, uh, we, on, we on board, never take that energy off with you. If you meet that lady behind that counter or that gentleman behind that counter upon delivering and they got a bad attitude, meet them with the opposite. I say, you might mess around getting loaded faster than whoever's been there already. Mm. You know, just being able to cut, cut through the, you know, cut through somebody else's tension and be who you are, they'll, they'll, less, they'll less likely be abrasive to you. What are some t telltale signs, man, that's automatic red flags for you? Some, some other ones that when you, you meet a driver that makes you say, you know, I might want to stay clear. In person or over the phone? Both. Um, over the phone, um, lack of response, um, lack of vision. If I ask you, you know, where do you see yourself uh, two years, whether you're going to be a part of this company or not? If you don't have an immediate sense of vision, then that lets me know you're a delayed thinker. You're a delayed executioner. You don't execute at the highest rate of your capabilities, which is not a problem. I'd love to help you with that, but it's just a sign. Um, in person, body language. Um, uh, shoot, the person is deep one, bro. As you get you get all sorts of characters, <laughs> talk, man. Talk, talk about uh, it, You man. get body language. You get, um, when the owner's not around, you get a different type of verbiage. You know what I mean? I like the owners to be at the onboards because it gives them the chance to learn the equipment too. Um, and it gives them a chance to see how their driver's going to communicate with an instructor to some extent. If your driver can't take instructions, if I got on these black gloves and your driver got on these black gloves and I'm touching that tire, I'm going to step back to see if your driver has the ornate attention to touch the tire too. Right. That's what I'm here for. Right. So it's just it's certain signs, you, you know, we look for um, just to be able to tell. And I, once we walk away, the, the only be like, hey, man, what you think about that driver? I'm like, he ain't about to touch nothing on that truck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he ain't about to touch nothing. But that steering wheel and that horn. Right, right, right. Know? How That's important? It. How important is it for a driver to be mechanically inclined, man? It's not highly important. I just need your eyes. Mm. I just need your eyes. Um, and I'll show you what you need to circumnavigate. You ain't got to know nothing about a truck. But you got to know how to lift that hood up. You got to know how to use your ears and your eyes. And your, and your senses, your, all your senses got to come to use. Uh. So if you if you're not mechanically inclined, so long as you could notice that that ain't supposed to be like that, right? And you can report that, that's enough, right? Because that is a standard. That's a standard, not for just me, but that's for your life, bro. Your life's on the line. That's a fact. You know what I mean? You out here running around willy nilly, and you got your truck bleeding down the road. You damage you damaging the other other equipment. Nonetheless, you about to cause a, a harm to somebody else on the road. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, so that's that's serious. What, what about like, do, do you ever get into like looking into DQ files and all of that, like MVRs? I do when it's my personal drivers. Okay, what what is there any telltale signs that you look for there, like as far as like jobs, like mm -hmm. maybe uh, gaps in employment? Inconsistencies. Um, the inconsistencies I look for is based upon um, how long you've been working compared to what you say. <laughs> if you say, you tell me, yeah, I've been out here ten years, bro. And you, you, and you got your three Yeah, before. you got your CDL in 20, 2017. <laughs> right. Like right. What ten years, you talking what about? What were you driving you know exactly? What I mean? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I was team driving. And I was helping unload. <laughs> oh, you was in a box truck then, <laughs> different capacity. So you know, right. you gotta you gotta weed through somebody's um, representative. So they're coming at you with the representatives, kid. Yes. And if you ain't listening close enough, you know you you a hired representative. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be back here talking again. Oh my gosh. Talk to me about talk to me about how you got into the the role that you play now that where I kind of discovered you, mm -hmm. where you're starting to help other people now grow their businesses. Just kind of give what what's what's what 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 do you do exactly so mm -hmm. people are aware who's watching this show? Okay. And and then talk to me how you kind of got into that. Uh well, my name is Kim Wages. I like long walks on the beach. Um, but yeah, short story long. I, I, I like onboarding. We, uh, we, we actually developed a, a standard of onboarding. Um, we actually coined the phrase too. Before we brought it out, onboarding wasn't even a phrase in this industry. Mm. Um, it wasn't even a concept because they were what? In my truck. Mm. I ain't gonna, I don't need, you got how much years? 20 years? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what you need to do. You now. good. That truck ready for you, bro. Go on, go on and get yeah, it, yeah. bro. You can yeah. name the truck whatever you want to name it. Right, um, right. So yeah, we developed onboarding on the behalf of there being a void in the industry. Um, and us seeing that drivers was coming out here less prepared, more than ever. Companies was being started up less than ever with preparedness and standards. Uh, so we just was like, there gotta be some sense of morale attached to the standard of starting up a company. Not only that, how do you put a driver in it and make sure the company is going to run successful after you indoctrinate that driver? So, you know, even when you get them in there, you still got to follow up. You know, you still got to make sure that the parameters that you set is being held. Uh, so we developed the onboarding practice, which is um, if I'm showing up to your location, it's going to take about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, we introduce ourselves. I introduce myself to your driver, not as K and K. If I'm coming to Truck and Hustle and you got the company, hey, what's going on, man? I'm Ken Wages. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Wages partnered with uh, with Truck and Hustle. Right. You know, obviously I'm affiliated with KK and Truck and Hustle, right. but I represent myself as a part of your company. Gotcha. So it doesn't. I get drivers calling me before after I left, like, yo, you hiring? Right. right. I kid you not. Right. Um, and I, that's why I make sure to implore them on your company being uh, um, raising standards and having value, so that they don't get enticed by what I'm offering. Mm. It happens um, because they opportunist. Some of them. I don't want to put a, a, a yeah, blame on them. Facts, facts. But um, so with the onboarding, we just facilitated um, a standard of inspection. We start out with the on, um, bumper to bumper, truck and trailer. Whether you got truck or trailer, um, we want you. We got to itemize everything. Your driver's gonna. He better come in black. She she <laughs> he or she better come in black because they go touch everything. <laughs> right. Um. So we go from the time we pop that hood to the time we taking off on the road. Uh. We 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 doing an um, inspection. We going into logs. Your driver don't have any familiarity of it. We either gonna install it in your truck too. Shout to she trucking. Uh, we go install it in your truck too, um, and we're gonna also be able to teach your driver how to use it in a standardized way that's gonna leave no room for error. Mm. We got a super general way for your driver to log that is DOT compliant, and it is the substandard of your driver being efficient without having any um, realms of stupidity kicking. Right. Um, like oh, the, oh, oh, well, I didn't know. This is super, super plain. Right. Uh, in layman's term. Um, go from there, we take your driver on the road. I want to make sure your driver know how to itemize the engine brake, everything in that truck. We going 70 miles down the road. I'm telling your driver, hit the engine brake. I want to see you move. If you can't move your hands around, yeah. You can't, you can't be you can't safely operate this truck. Yeah. You know what I mean? What your mirrors look like? Your mirrors good? This is this trailer wagon? Is this trailer pulling to the side? I hit the brakes. I want to see how, you know, I want to see all of this response time. Here's some lane changes. I want all of that. Are we supposed to get off in half a mile? There's a car right next to it. I want to see all of that. Mm. You know what I mean? I got a specific uh, specific spot in Atlanta, which I won't say because it's going to get crowded. Yeah. But we I take them off the highway. It's the road test portion. And we make a we treat it like as if we missed out with turn. We both know every time a truck misses its turn, it's the most panicky moment in the yeah. truck's history what of history. What do I do now? Right? Right. At this point, I'm gauging your driver's patience. It's very important in these trucks. So when we get off the highway, if we have a trailer or if we don't have a trailer, it's a two-lane turn to the left. I was like, I'm already reading to see if he's gonna be in a proper lane. First of, first of all, whether we have a trailer or not, I tell him, drive as if you have a trailer behind you. I say, make every turn as if you have a high load. Even if you empty, start developing that habit. So we making the turn, you gotta get over two more lanes 
to get in the turning lane to get back on the highway, bro. Mm. This is one of the busiest intersections on the east side. Shout out to my people on 138, because they know. <laughs> Man, <laughs> no you doubt. see me out there and that hand come out the window? Yeah. That's communication. That's what I'm looking for that driver to do. Uh, I'm looking for that driver to communicate with the vehicles next to them, because we got to get over two lanes with truck and trailer. Yeah. Man, I don't have to switch seats. I don't have to. I don't have to pop brakes and say, yo, yo, calm down, get out in the middle of the intersection. Wow. So it, it brings out the 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 what they call it. The representatives is in the right. back bunk right now. Right, you see those yeah. efficiencies. Yeah, like, yeah, like, you okay. see you see them immediately because you know how to pressure test them. Yeah, the same way we pressure test in the company, we pressure test in the drivers. Right. So I'm putting them through um, an hour and a half to two hour uh, 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 motion of how are you on this road. So we get back on the highway, cool. You got your headlights on though. Mm. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm hitting them with thing after thing to help them understand why things is needed. Your headlights ain't supposed to just be on just for you to, oh yeah, I wanna see, it's daytime. Why don't you my headlights? Because you're in a white truck. Your white truck is contrast. It's gonna bounce off light. If you're getting off the highway, that car ain't gonna know how far or how close you are because you're in a white vehicle. Mm. You know what I mean? That, that's, the painters, that's the painter's mentality. Yeah. You paint that room, they wear all white, right? Yeah. You know why they wear all white? No. I thought it was to see who the best painter is. <laughs> I'll be 100. That's what right. I thought. Yo, whoever walks out the room <laughs> yeah, clean, whoever walks out the room clean, right? <laughs> Man, the painter humbled me. He was like, nah, young blood. He's like, it's the contrast. We go in and paint a dark room. As long as we all wear white, we can see that it's being layered the right way. So that helped me understand. I, I, I had to say, wait, that's, if that's white, then we got white trucks too. I said, let me look it up. And it is. That was part of the reason why you have to have your headlights on to be able to gauge the proximity. Wow. And if you got a white truck, it's even worse. Wow. So it's just these little things, you know, that makes... That makes up a good company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, being able to include and find out what the driver's attention span is, their patience. And once we get back, you know it gets serious because we about to back. Mm, we about to back. Not back. We ain't just driver siding either, bro. Right. We blind siding. We all of that. Right. If you mess up this, I'm going to have you straight line back. All yeah. of that. I'm yeah. kicking in an overdrive. I got a little cone in the back of my truck. You see me pull that cone out? Oh, <laughs> That's a wrap, man. The cone is like, yo. That's that's when the driver gets on the pull-up bar. Yeah, yeah. You better get one of the rip rights or something. <laughs> they start pulling up a hundred yeah. times. Yep. So, so in effect, you're, you're, you're road testing the driver. Yet. So are these drivers already hired or are they? Nah. They're, they're not be, hired yet because you have to give the final go-ahead, right? Because man. if a driver goes out there and performs terrible, I'm sure you're telling that investor yeah, like, nah. I am, 100%. This might not be the one. I'm going to be 100 with you. The rate we at right now in this industry, I feel like people are... Um, People are utilizing the onboard as a. Uh, it's just the same thing as having that that uh, Raycon on the on the on the, on the IG. I'm gonna show the onboard. I'm gonna show the Raycon. I'm gonna show. Oh yeah, we moving. But if I just told you that garbage, that driver's trash. Why is that driver rolling? Right. You already hired the driver. Your driver done flew out here with all their luggage, bro. Right. How am I supposed to feel as an instructor? I'm walking up to your truck and your driver got all, everything unpacked already in the in the cubbies. That's telling me that you actually hired this driver. So regardless of whatever my findings is, this driver's here. Right, they, they're just checking a box. That's it. To pretty much say they did it. Yeah. It's a part of the checklist. That's did it. that, did no that, No integrity did that. behind it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't I have the driver. I told the owner, I was like, yo, uh, bro, I don't know. Driver flipped the truck. A week and a half. <sighs> wow. I get a call. Yo, what you think I should do? I already told you before you hired the driver what you should do. You shouldn't have hired the driver. Right. Now you just got to do damage control. You had a load under you. You got to handle that insurance claim. Yeah. You got to get your big boy pants on now. So, you know, that's that's kind of why we try to be as transparent as we can with setting business up with the integrity of who they're incorporating your business. Um, if people are power sharks, keep them, keep them at bay. Set your standards. Don't just because they telling you, uh, tell them you got 10 trucks, it'll hire a driver faster. Do you really want to do that? Because if you tell me you got 10 trucks as the as the driver, you better have it figured out when I get over there. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Your one truck ain't gonna be suffice enough of me. Oh, yeah, oh, we ain't gonna get a load today. Well, you got 10 trucks, so you got it. You got a backup plan. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Now I'm taking the 34 and I'm still at home. That's a fact. So do you do you do like follow-ups as well? Like you you you, you said you do that original, the mm -hmm. initiation, mm -hmm. get everything started, but do you come back? Do you do like continued learning? I do like for that? the owners. Okay. For the owners it is. Uh for the drivers, not so much. Um, in terms of continued learning as far as um, like like driver safety driving yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. If, the, if your driver is experiencing issues, it's a good chance that we're gonna wind up on the phone and we're gonna be doing an audit. Okay. I do an audit before the DOT and the FMCSA do an audit on your logs and your, and your whole business. Right. So if you just started your business and you ain't even reached 180 days, if any inconsistencies, there's a good chance I'm going to be on the phone. You had a flat tire, you're trying to figure out a roadside breakdown situation because you ain't know nothing. Right. There's a good chance I'm going to be on the phone. Right. If your driver trying to adjust the rear view mirror that don't exist in the truck and you can't <laughs> find it, I'm going to be on the phone. 
<laughs> like, I'm just like, for real. The situations are so like, to me, they like, oh, well, you sure about that? I can answer this question, oh but it's, you know, I'm going to still invoice you. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, I do the follow-ups, but I like to be able to get them from the beginning, bro. Right. Because it decreases the need to follow up so long as they want to have continued learning on their own behalf. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, if 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 they take your guidance from mm -hmm. the beginning, then mm -hmm. those other problems shouldn't really. Yeah, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> they shouldn't. Nah, you're good. You're good, man. That's uh, that's that's really cool, man. How, how has um with with people working with with, with you mm -hmm. and what you're doing? How has like the feedback been? Like, have you know have have you ever had somebody who's been running and then had to come back to you like, mm -hmm. yo, I need help? Yeah, like I like, have talk talk about I that have. a little bit. Um, this, the situation at play is they bought a truck that had no warranty. And I'm 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 50 50 on the warranty thing because I'm mechanically inclined, so that's understandable. Right. Um they bought the truck overpriced, no warranty, uh, and, they, and they threw the driver out prematurely before it was the driver was onboarded. They had breakdowns, they was having many breakdowns. Driver couldn't handle it in the death. You know, the death is killing everybody's truck right now. DEF, DEF yep. is killing everybody's trucks right now. So they didn't even know how to include. A maintenance provision to be able to keep running su uh, successfully. So you literally had to hit the reset button. I said, yo, you might want to bring your truck to Atlanta, let one of our techs look at it. While that's happening, put your driver in a hotel, not just any cheap hotel. Don't be that guy to put him in a Holiday Inn on the South Side somewhere. Put him in something nice. <laughs> right. um, and it gives your driver a chance to realize that you are, you are trying to take care of him. You got their best thing at interest. But while your driver's there, once I get your truck into one of our, our people's hands, I'm going to follow with your driver now. I'm going to call your driver. Before I call him, I'm looking at your log system. I'm on your admin side now. I'm logging in and looking at how your driver's been managing logs for the last 30 days. Mm. So now while your driver's taking this break, I'm also giving you the benefit of him learning while sitting in that hotel. So he ain't just sitting there on ice. Right. So I'm calling him and boosting his morale or her morale. Right. Hey, how you been? How the road been treating you? I'm, I'm asking him, as they're my, my driver. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually, uh, yo, I see your logs was looking like this. this oh, yeah, man, I'm glad you called me on that. Most of these companies don't have a log department. That's a fact. I say 85% of them, mom and pops, don't have a log department or even understand the concepts of logs. Right. So it gives me a chance to come in at certain, um, certain little spot points and help out the company based off of what I see in the foreground. Uh, so if I see you at drivers literally having issues with that compliance, I'm going to do everything I can in, in 30 minutes to an hour's time to give your driver whatever they need. Um, if we have to follow up, then of course. Yeah. But most time we never have to. Wow, wow. How, how do you manage both businesses, man? Running your own your your own trucking company and also doing this. I got help. You know, we all got help. I got big bro over there. You know, mm -hmm. doing the ASXG side. We doing the the, the, the truck sales. Talk it's about going that. Crazy. Let's, let's let's talk about crazy. The truck sales. Oh, how, how'd you get into that? First of all, and yeah, that's, that's the shoebox, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shoebox that, coming that, back. That, you know, had the shoebox under the bed. The shoebox shaking under the bed. You know what I'm saying? We talk, had to shake it up a little bit, talk, man. Talk about it. The company's ASG. ASXG Trucking. ASXG Trucking. Yes, right, what, what do you guys do? Talk about um, it. Man, we, we, we facilitate equipment nationwide. You know, if we got a driver somewhere and we see an auction coming about, coming about, route the driver over there real quick. Let them look at something. Our drivers is apt to know what to look for. So route one of our drivers over there, look at that real quick. Check it out for me. Let me know if it's something that we need to bid on. But even if we ain't, then we know how to actually read the PDFs on these sites to dictate if that is a good buy or not. So we was actually in the auction game before the auction became, became oversaturated. Mm. So we was getting trucks at a super low median and still being able to show love and give it to people without hitting them over the head. You know what I mean? So the average truck, um, case in point, um, the average truck we would sell would be anywhere between, let's say right now, the industry, a 2016 is going for a 60 to 70K, right? Yep. How is it that we're still selling them in the 40s? Mm. With, with lower miles. Mm. With lower miles than the, you know what I'm saying? Right. And That's because we shot, we shot wise. We understand what the equipment is going to need if it needs anything. And then we understand how to actually close the deal. So we're going to go to that auction. We're not just looking at one piece of equipment. We're looking at different type of capacities and we're looking at different type of variances. We're looking at box trucks. We're looking at trailers. We're looking at flatbeds. We're looking at everything. Right. Um, we build the morale, and um, Big Bro build the morale with a relationship with Richie Brothers in, in them, allowing us the cap to be able to facilitate multiple pieces of equipment at one time. Mm. And when you do that, you get a, big, a better deal, allowing you to show love. 
Wow. You know? And how long you been doing doing this? Oh, man, that kicked up since uh, COVID, tell you the truth. Since COVID? That kicked in, like, right right as soon as COVID happened, and, we saw the void. And the thing is now, man, people are dying for Bro, the Bro, that's an understatement. Tractors, man. It's that's crazy. Understatement. You can't but they got to get out of that habit of thinking automatics is the only way. Mm. Don't do that. Because I buy against the industry. So while you thinking automatics is the is the most the most needed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go buy me a manual. Right. For 10, 15,000 less. Right. And put it to work the same way as that automatic you waiting for. Right. So while you waiting, we're already taking off at the finish line. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's a fact. The only thing is that uh, there's all these drivers graduating now with these automatic mm -hmm. restrictions, mm -hmm. and they can't drive. You got to step up your advertising. <laughs> you got to step up your yeah your yeah. marketing plan. Um, and then you also you can't upgrade a driver. Right. That don't mean just because he came out with the automatic, he's limited. That's a fact. You know what I mean? There's that's some drivers fact. that might not have been taught right, so they said, "Nah, I'm gonna stick to the auto." Yeah. I, you know, I, I done seen a bunch of instructors lack in that shiftability. I could teach you how to float in a matter of five seconds, mm. just by get, just I by telling you to stop five, overthinking. If it's five seconds, bro. I'm, Maybe ten. I'm that guy. <laughs> RPMs. <laughs> uh, nah, uh, you see, I, mean, <laughs> I take your mind off all of that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, I tell you, don't even look at the RPMs. I, man, I, it's it's been a long time, but I know yeah. I was I was used to be stuck. Anxiety is you know key. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah, really it's what overthinking. It is. Cause you have so much going on. Mm -hmm. You got that trailer swinging. You got yep. you looking in your rear view mirrors, yep. and then you try to pay attention to that. I tell you straight up. I tell you straight up. Stop thinking and keep your foot on the floor. Those two things right there from the get-go, once you get in that truck on, on the shiftability, stop overthinking and keep your foot on that floor. And I say, if you take that left foot off that floor, I'm going to smack your right knee. <laughs> you ain't going to take it off. You ain't going to take oh, it off. Man. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's just that's to get you to floating. Uh, but just to understand the equipment, man. Mm. You know, it's just it's there. But it just allowed us, because we see things ahead of it before it occurs um, in dope. this industry, um, especially with the shortage in equipment. We was looking at that like, shoot, December of last year. Yeah. He was like, yo, it's about to be a major shortage. So which business is the 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 one you're focusing on the most, man? Like what's 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 the uh the most important to you? Like what's your priority? Because you got your own trucking mm -hmm. company, you got the onboarding for other people, you got the truck sales. Mm -hmm. What's the top top priority? Uh, I, think, the I, top I, priority? I think I'm about to say I think I suffer from the same thing Octomom suffered from. <laughs> Like, yeah. can't focus on one child. Yeah, you focus on one child. The other ones might be the, you know, oh, might be the ones to change God. the world. You know, um, yeah, in a bad way. That's too well, funny. I, I feel like you just gotta. I feel like you gotta give everything attention. Yeah, you know what I mean. As you as you develop it, as you start it, develop it. You know what I mean. If you if if today I gave child A attention, tomorrow I give child B attention. Mm. Um, that way it could all move in unison. Because uh, once you get to a point where you singularly focused on things, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna fall apart. Wow! Wow! Well, listen, man, this interview has exceeded my expectations. Oh, man. my brother. I, I, I can't even front, man. You've kept me captivated the whole oh, time. my brother. We could probably talk for another two hours. That's a fact. You know what I mean? And we ain't even get to the cusp of it yet. What's, hold on. What's the cusp? Is there something else? Nah, that's a lot going on, man. It's partnerships. It's, it's being what? able to... Well, hold on. We can't... Let's, 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 keep, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what else we got going on, man? Tell me, because I, I don't want to leave any stones <laughs> unturned. What else we got happening? Now, nah, we actually trying to open a facility on the east side of Atlanta. Okay. Um, and the facility is going to encompass everything from onboard and on-site uh, parking, truck parking. Um, we actually do equipment acquisitions. So if you come in and, and we help you find a truck and buy a truck nationwide, I'll send one of our drivers out there to bring the truck back. We'll get out there, inspect it, bring it back, and it come back to our site. And we'll ready your truck at our site. Your mm -hmm. truck will get uh, signage. Your, your truck will get um, inspected, repaired. It'll get the signage it needs. If you need an um, APU, if you, whatever it is, you want a refrigerator, whatever it is you want in that truck, we're going to put it in there. Um, it, it just, it's just being able to be a one-stop shop. Right. You know what I'm saying? PMs, DOTs, all of that. Um, so that's what we're trying to bring to the east side of Atlanta right now. Um, it's easy to go to Ellenwood and all those other locations, but nah, we east side Jody over here. <laughs> no so that's, that's the beauty. Uh, we, we see the void just by paying, like I said, we paying attention to the voids. Yeah. Um, we know that it is, everybody working on trucks right now, but nobody doing it with integrity. Wow. If you take my part off, I want it to go back exactly how I came off. Yeah, and that's the that's one of the issues in this industry. Everybody think they can fix things to their degree. That I mean, I, I think that's the theme of this 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 discussion, man. Is like integrity, integrity, because, bro. like you said, down to maintenance on trucks, mm -hmm. down to onboarding these drivers properly, mm -hmm. down to making sure these companies have proper foundations. This is all integrity, and I think a lot of times because this industry has become so sexy, mm -hmm. people hop, skip, and jump yeah. over this part. It's the provocative part. You know, it's yep. the part that takes the real work. Yep, nobody want to touch it. That's what it is. It's so the part that the really takes the reading, the studying, mm -hmm. the getting into. Like, it's the part that everybody wants to outsource. Yeah, that's where the most growth comes from, though. Yeah. So that's why I was saying, if you're going to outsource something, learn it first. 
Because you'd be surprised. You might learn something that's going to have your whole trajectory change and your timeline have much more dictation. If you, if you, if I'm going to outsource my accounting, I want to know every nickel and dime or how it's being moved or how it's being controlled before I say, here, handle this. You know, because it's, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to give me more confidence and trust in you to do the job. Yeah. You call me with an issue. If I outsource that, how am I going to solve your problem? That's a fact. You know, so we got to be, we got to be a preview to our own timelines. I love that, man. All right. Well, listen, before we get out of here, yes, um, first, we got to give the final thought, um, which is basically you've been giving final thoughts all damn show. <laughs> I appreciate it. But uh, we got it, but I, I don't know what this one's going to be. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just I'm ready for it. And, um, you know, then we just got to let everybody know where they can get, connect with you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the people who don't know you, because you're all over the place in terms of working with investors. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're the go to guy already. I appreciate it's, it. It's out there. It's documented. I appreciate um, it. But, you know, the other people who are listening to this mm -hmm. show and want to get with you and want to connect with you, where they can find you at, learn more about the truck sales, so forth and so on, and final yeah. thoughts. So let's start with the final thought, and then we'll get down to, like, the socials and all okay. that stuff like that. So uh, final thought. Final thought. Um, I'm going to straight up and say, be a privy to your timeline to the point of execution. Uh, don't allow things to take your attention away from what you are or who you can be. And um, just and just stay steadfast with that. I like that. Short, sweet, yeah. concise, but real. Um, where can we connect with you, brother? Uh, yeah, IG's IG's probably gonna be a golden goose. Uh, if you, if <laughs> I got people sending smoke signals, all sorts of ways. Um, hit me up on IG Kim K I M underscore Kaleidoscope uh, K A L E I D O S O P E Kim Kaleidoscope underscore. Um, you can shoot me a DM. Uh, if you want to shoot us an email, kktransport29 at gmail. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll respond in a prompt time. And depending on what your situation is, itemize and be brief in your, in your statement what you need. We can help you out. Kaleidoscope, where'd that come from? Just being worldly a vision. You just can't be... There's no one part of any of us. That's me tapping into all those trades. I tapping need, into my multiple personalities. I knew you'd have a great answer for that. <laughs> I, I knew it just wasn't like a so, random nah, arbitrary, nah, like, nah, you know, nah. I like kaleidoscopes, man. Rap, what you yeah, talking yeah. about? Used to play with them when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Multifaceted, man. Crazy, crazy dope, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. My you have added so much value. I, I know people are going to walk away That's from this interview goal. like, yo, mm -hmm. I need to connect with Kim. Man, I appreciate um, it. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hustle fam, listen, if you don't respect that, your whole perspective is whack. Mm -hmm. Like we always say, what we say? If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. It's only your desire. A fact. And we are out. Yes, sir. So uh, if you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.